Okay, here's the truth. No protest ever took place. When Ambassador Stevens talked to you, perhaps minutes before he died, as a dying declaration, what precisely did he say to you? He said, Greg, we're under attack. Would a highly decorated career diplomat have told you or Washington had there been a demonstration outside his facility that day? Yes, sir, he would have. Did he mention one word about a protest or a demonstration? No, sir, he did not. No intelligence report, phone call, evidence, or anything ever suggested otherwise. In fact, every report from the ground indicated this was clearly a coordinated terror attack planned by a group, not an act of terror by angry protesters. When caught in that lie, the White House tried to shuffle the blame onto the CIA, saying the Benghazi talking points that blamed the video were put together by the intelligence community. Those talking points originated from the uh, intelligence community. They reflected the IC's best assessments of what they thought had happened. Right. Here's the truth. There was an extensive amount of input from the State Department, specifically Hillary Clinton's spokesperson, concerning the edits. I have obtained 12 different versions of those talking points that shows that they were dramatically edited by the administration. Dramatically. Jay Carney said the administration made one change to the talking points, one. And the only edit made by the White House or the State Department uh, to those talking points generated by the CIA was a change from uh, referring to the, the facility that was attacked in Benghazi from consulate, because it was not a consulate, to diplomatic post. I think I had referred to it as just diplomatic facility. I think it may have been to diplomatic post. That is incredibly specific. But here's the truth. There were 12 major revisions that went well beyond stylistic. Jay Carney said the edits didn't change the substance of the talking points. But the point being, it was a, a matter of uh, uh, non-substantive factual mm -hmm. correction. Uh, right. Anybody, anybody watch, uh, anybody watch uh, last week? Buck Sexton was on, and he had it all on a chalkboard, all of the changes. The truth is the State Department edits deleted all reference to the al-Qaeda-affiliated group Ansar al-Sharia, as well as references to CIA warnings about terrorist threats in Benghazi in the months preceding the attack. The edits prove the administration knew from day one that this was a planned terror attack and specifically went out of their way to provide cover for the terror groups involved in the attack. Why? And then why would you instead direct the blame on America? an American freedom, and a filmmaker. It proves that Hillary Clinton lied in the face of families of the fallen Americans while she gave that speech when she said, we are going to do everything we can to make sure the guy who made this video goes to jail. And they put him in jail. Hillary Clinton also said there was no advanced intelligence that warned of an attack. And with all of our missions overseas in advance of September 11th, as is done every year, we did an evaluation on threat streams. And the Office of the Director of National Intelligence has said we had no actionable intelligence that an attack on our post in Benghazi was planned or imminent. Keyword, actionable. I'll get to that in a second, but here's the truth. September 8th, three days before the attack, the local security official met with American diplomats in the city and he warned them about the deteriorating security. He told the U.S. officials, the situation is frightening, it scares us. And Gregory Hicks said this. In Bahrain, my Shia opposition contacts gave me advance warning of impending attacks on our embassy and anti-government, anti-American demonstrations, allowing us to prepare and avoid injuries to staff. Okay, we received a quote from one of our sources. Quote, everyone in the intelligence community knew this attack was coming. This bolsters Hicks' account and further proves Hillary Clinton was lying when she said there was no advance intelligence or warning of any pending, uh, pending attacks. However, she used actionable. Well, if you want to excuse her by using the word actionable, then we have to know the answer to this question. Why were you confused? 
why did you swear you were going to arrest a filmmaker? Because you did have intelligence. Maybe it wasn't actionable at the time, but once it broke, you knew. Just a few hours ago, about noon, the president again talked about the video. Here's what he said today. Immediately after this event happened, we were not clear who exactly had carried it out, how it had, been, uh, how it had occurred, what the motivations were. It happened at the same time as we had seen uh, attacks on U.S. embassies in Cairo as a consequence of this film. Unbelievable. But here's the truth. There was no protest in Benghazi. It was an attack. The protests in Egypt weren't about the video either. He's lying again. We know that the 912 Egypt pro protests were about the imprisonment of the blind sheik, a terrorist serving a life sentence um, in the States for his role in the 93 World Trade Center bombing. So he's making this up yet again. No one even knew this video existed. There were no media reports prior to September 11, 2012. It had virtually no views. People weren't even motivated to email it, let alone protest and kill somebody over it. It is a mountain of lies. Let me give you a flashback from the debates. And the suggestion that anybody in my team, whether the Secretary of State, our UN ambassador, anybody on my team, would play politics or mislead when we've lost four of our own governor is offensive. Oh, um, I want the president to know I'm not only suggesting it, I'm declaring it. And I agree, it is offensive. It's sick. And so why would this administration do it and then lie? Well, a few reasons. One, it fits with their political correctness theme, their embrace of the Muslim Brotherhood's goals, it, um, it also provides political cover for the administration's lie that al-Qaeda was defeated. But it goes deeper than that. And this is the one thing that you're not going to get the Republicans to talk about either. And believe me, believe me, at the highest levels, they know. It goes back to the original theory um, that we broadcast here on this network just a few days after Libya. And on Friday, Geraldo Rivera reported on that very thing. But what we talked about days after Benghazi, he said, he's now hearing from his sources, arming the Syrian rebels. I believe Watch. in my sources, they were there to round up those shoulder-fired yes. surface-to-air missiles. They were going to hand those missiles over to the Turks. And the Turks were going to give them to the rebels in Syria. Right. It was like a Iran Contra. Yep. I think that it, it, it merits gigantic investigation. It will all, all right. become clear. Okay, this is really interesting because Fox News should either discredit Geraldo Rivera and make it clear that his sources were wrong, or they should follow that story up. We made the same prediction on September 17th. We're a scrappy little media group. I don't have the global resources of Fox or ABC or CBS, but we're still breaking ground on this story. Why is it the big networks with all of those resources have nothing? Well, actually, they do. Um, CBS News has spiked a couple of stories on this. Yet the problem is, is that the head of CBS News, um, he has a brother. And his brother happens to be the guy who changed all the talking points on Benghazi. David Rhodes. Now, this is the head of ABC. This is Ben Sherwood. I actually like the guy. He's a friend. But he's wrong here. Give him credit. They did break the story on Friday, and they were the ones that broke the dam. But his brother is President Barack Obama's deputy national security advisor for strategic communications. Uh, or no, no, no. That's this, this person. Ben's is his um, sister. His sister is Dr. Elizabeth Sherwood. Um, she is the uh, special assistant to the president. And then you have Jay Carney. Well, Jay Carney is married to somebody, she just happens to be the senior national correspondent, Claire Shipman. Uh, let's see, CBS, ABC, NB. Hello. NBC spiked the story this weekend. Gregory Hicks, the whistleblower, they spiked it. The story is... A Democrat, 
a Democrat that voted for Hillary Clinton. But NBC didn't think that that was important. Maybe um, the president um, mocked the idea of tyranny lurking around the corner because it's not around the corner. It's already here. It's not only here with Benghazi, it is also here with the IRS. And please, dear God, pray that your neighbors open their eyes because the IRS becomes the health care enforcer in just a few months. And we'll show you what the IRS, no, I'm sorry, we'll show you what the press has finally recognized that the IRS has been doing for the last couple of years. Next.